Hey, it's Mariah. In case you didn't catch that, I'm bisexual. It feels a little bit weird to be sharing that out just in the open, in the wild of the internet when technically I'm not even like all the way out yet, but we'll get there. And what felt really important for me is that this is June, it's Pride, and I want to just kind of own it. With that in mind, I have five graphic novels that I plan on reading this month to celebrate this wonderful thing we call Pride. Please join me. So the first thing I have to show you is Motor Crush Volume 1. This is by Brendan Fletcher, Cameron Stewart, and Babs Tarr, and they're the same team that did the 2016 Batgirl run, which I adored. So I was really excited that they were doing a new project together. Motor Crush is about Domino Swift. She's an up and coming star in the world of motorbike racing, and she's prepping for this huge event, the World Grand Prix, while also at night participating in these illegal street races called the Cannonball. The Cannonball is where rival bike gangs race against each other in order to win crush. Crush is an illegal accelerant used in engines of bikes to help racers kind of get an edge over each other. It seems that it's basically an open secret even among the professionals in the World Grand Prix that some racers will use this in order to win races, win money, win fame and fortune and all of that. Domino is really good at this illegal street racing so she has a whole stash of crush ready to go. Something happens to it and she needs to recover her stash and land herself in a bit of trouble along the way. That's all I know so far because I've only really um, kind of gone through the first issue but I'm so excited to see where this goes. The art style itself is so fantastic and I knew Babs Tar would do a good job with this because like she loves motorcycle girls but this is so up her alley it's ridiculous. I'll show you just a bit of this just so you can get an idea, but her palettes are gorgeous. Like this is the kind of starting lineup for the Cannonball. Everybody looks so cool and so interesting and they only need a couple of pages to like really get you into this world, which is amazing. And considering this is a book about motorcycle racing, it you would think it would be um, maybe difficult to really get that action to read, but they do such a great job panel to panel of uh, displaying movement and really giving you a feel for the action that's happening. So like the back of this trade describes this as sci-fi action adventure. It definitely is and I'm so into it. So the next thing I want to show you is technically a reread for me and that is My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness by Nagata Kabi. If you're feeling a little bit thrown by the title, please don't be. It is such a good book and it's so relatable. This is technically an autobiographical manga. I read this I think late last year after I picked it up on the trip to San Francisco and it's amazing. The author shares so much about her life from her struggles with her sexual identity to her personal and professional anxieties and troubles with relationships to uh, her mental health issues and eating disorders and there is something in here for just about everybody. Even if none of it quite rings true to your own life experience, I feel like there's this underlying kind of emotion to it all that makes it so relatable. Even though I'm obviously reading this in the English translation, the art itself feels universally legible. Her style is very sparse and very sketchy, but it feels so fitting to the material and she's able to convey so much feeling with so little actual uh, ink on the page. So you can kind of see for yourself what it looks like. And you can tell what I mean by sparse. There is very light line work, not a lot of detail, really no backgrounds to speak of, but she gets across what she needs and it's so good. I definitely need to finish rereading this before the sequel comes out and I think that's actually happening in a couple of days, so I gotta get on this. Next on my TBR is Zodiac Star Force Volume 1 by Kevin Panetta and Paulina Ganyushow. And I really hope I'm saying that right. I tried to find reference. I hope that's okay. 
I found out about Zodiac Star Force back in the days when I was regularly going to my local comic shop and I was trying to get my younger sister involved and she was watching a lot of Sailor Moon at the time so I thought this would be amazing and never really read it myself, was always planning to and now this is the perfect opportunity because this story, um, spoiler no spoiler, promises a kind of development in a relationship between two of the Star Force members, which is really rad. Something I think is really cool after having just gone through the first issue is that this is not an origin story. It doesn't start with um, them each kind of individually getting their powers. This is a couple years down the line after they've all kind of been there, done that. They've had their big battles, they've worked together as a team, but everyone's kind of over it except for Kim. I love Kim. I feel like she's going to be one of my favorite characters in this series. But something happens to their group leader while she's fighting a monster, one that they haven't really seen before, and she gets this infection and uh, they all need to work together basically to figure out what's going on with her and help her fix it and that seems to be like the inciting incident for getting the band back together. So can't wait to get into this one and also I think the second volume is coming out in August so yeah pretty cool. Next up is The Backstagers Volume 1. This is by James Tenney and the Fourth, Ryan Tsai, and Walter Biamonte, and this is so freaking adorable. And again, I've only really looked at the first issue, but this is a story about a young kid named Jory. He's a new kid at this all-boys prep high school. He basically is encouraged by his mom to find something to do after school, try to make some friends and put himself out there. So he goes to check out the drama club and these two twins, uh, what are their names? Kevin and Blake McQueen, who are very, very extra and very much like in charge of this whole theater scene. They are not very nice to him at all and they send him to go fetch a prop backstage, which leads Jory to this wonderful, dangerous, magical world of the backstagers. And I love this idea, like this notion that there is kind of a metaphorical magic to the stage and to what the actors are doing, but backstage there is this literal actual magic happening that makes for all this weirdness and these monsters and these shenanigans that these um, kids who work behind the scenes have to deal with in order to make productions happen. Basically the first issue shows you Jory going on an adventure with the backstagers and kind of getting to know them a little bit and then ultimately deciding that instead of being an actor he wants to work with them backstage and deal with all that magic and mayhem. There's such a clear anime influence here as well I think and this is something that I would actually really like to see animated and kind of brought to the screen that way. So last but not least, I have Heavy Vinyl by Carly Ooston and Nina Vacueva. This story takes place in 1998 and it follows Chris who is like 16 or 17 and she's a new employee at this record store called Mayhem Vinyl. She has an adorable crush on a co-worker named Maggie and uh, Chris is just trying to manage that and find her way into becoming on this inner circle of this group of girls that works at the record shop. Everybody else seems to have kind of like found their way and know what their role is in the group and Chris is just kind of like on the outsides trying to see where she fits in. But there seems to be a big wall between her and the rest of the girls, a big secret that they're keeping from her and Chris thinks that they have a secret band that she, she can't be a part of, which is just really cute. But she finds out that that's not the case when the lead singer of her favorite band goes missing and the band is scheduled to perform at the record shop. So this group of girls decides that they're gonna take it upon themselves to find the singer because, as they reveal to Chris, they are a vigilante teen girl fight club. I am all about this concept. I am all about really cool girl gangs. I am all about girls fighting for justice and I am so for this story. I remember picking up the first issue of this back when it was still named Hi-Fi Fight Club but they have since changed the name. I'm not sure if that's just because of legal issues or also because of like what they're anticipating down the line could be an issue if they wanted to do something else with this material but names changed that's all right. I think we're still waiting on issues like five, six, seven, and so on from Boombox, but this first volume collects issues one through four, 
and uh, it seems to be like a really, really cute story so far. Okay, so that's it. Um, I never really do TBRs, and I don't think this will be a regular thing in the future, but it seemed fitting to kind of look at my shelves and find some stuff to pull out specifically for this month to like get myself kickstarted back into reading. Maybe you found something on here that you are gonna read for pride or just like put on your list for down the line. Let me know if you did. Also, let me know if you want me to do any kind of standalone reviews on any of the things I just mentioned. Um, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.